Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at ya, savings coming at ya. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. When I woke up this morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous. All right, yeah, our roster looks great on paper. Whoop the hell. Whoop the hell. All right. All right. But at the end of the day, we better be a good team. And you start building that during this time of the year. Get your sorry ass up. Get your sorry ass up. Doing a lot of talking with somebody that ain't do shit today. Doing a lot of talking. Do you yeah, think you're resume. better than Jarrell Revis is right now? I'm right better than now. you. My 24 years of life, I'm better at life than you. Dang, life dang. Life. I ain't never seen you before, huh? Man, I'm gonna tell the coach you need some help. We're gonna expose you, boy. All right, we coming at your ass. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Roundtable. Let's go! Let's go! What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Fantasy Football Roundtable Podcast. Proud members of the Full Time Fantasy Podcast Network. You can find them at FTF Podnet on Twitter. You can find me, your host, Matthew Burning, at Sports Fanatic MB on Twitter. We are just one of a ton of great podcasts associated with this network, though, some of which are Jim Day of FF Champs, Corey Parsons and Dr. Roto from Sirius XM Radio, Mr. Bob Lung, the award winning fantasy football consistency guide and the creator of the Midwest Fantasy Expo. Dwayne McFarland, Blake Sullivan, and a ton of great others, and you can find all of us on FullTimeFantasy.com, your one-stop shop for all of your fantasy news, advice, and strategies. We at the Roundtable are also excited to be partnering with ExpandTheBoxScore.com. You can find them at XTBoxScore on Twitter. They have some of the most advanced stats in football, baseball, basketball, and college football. College football stats are extremely hard to find. For just $15 a year, you can look at all of these. I'm telling you guys, it is well worth it. If you like to dive into the analytical side of sports and or for I use it for prospects, college football prospects specifically, It is amazing. It goes down to the minutest of details in this stuff. And again, it's just $15 a year. If you use our code ROUNDTABLE, you will get 10% off of that, which is a steal of a deal, if I do say so myself, and probably the best deal in the industry. So definitely check them out, especially if you want to get a jump on the upcoming draft class. It'll be well worth your time and money. And it's our Friday show, which means we've got Mr. Dennis Bennett back with us again. You can follow him at culture underscore coach on Twitter. He will be jumping on with me as we finish breaking down all of the Sunday games for week 16 and the Monday night football game as we did all of the Saturday games on yesterday's pod. So let's jump Dennis in here and let's talk about week 16 and our fantasy football championships. And it is Friday, which means we've got Mr. Dennis Bennett with us back today as we're going to re or not recap, we are going to preview the rest of the week sixteen games. Dennis, what's going on, man? How's your week been so far? Man, I have had a great week. Uh, I'm off for the next five days. Uh clearly gonna be busy with Christmas, but right. uh, I don't have to worry about going into work, so that's nice. Uh looking forward to uh football the next couple days the bowl game started today so i'll dig a little deeper into college football over the next week or so and we'll see i've got five games of consequence this week i have three championship games and two third place games one which are both both in uh not both one of them is in the ohio fantasy football analyst league uh third place has a payout was uh, the illustrious Bob Long and Brad Reyes or Brad, Re- Brad Reyes, Mean Mr. Mode, uh, the third Mike Talenko, Jeremy Broen, uh, you might know him as DFF Madman, um, J. Mike Check and Chris Allen, a bunch of guys that all live in Ohio. Uh, we did a live draft this summer. It was pretty cool. So um, playing for third place in that one. Man, I started off. Six and oh, and then went two and five the rest Ugh. of the way. 
Oh, that sucks. Yeah. It was rough. Was it and then a, the other one, I'm uh, the Fantasy uh, FF Statistics Charity League. I'm playing for third place. Uh, if I win, uh, I think it's $100 gets donated to my charity of choice, which is the National uh, uh, Alliance or oh, National Coalition uh, Against Domestic Violence, okay. uh, which is the same charity I pu- league I play in with the third Mike. He has uh, that the Giving League. That's his league. So. Uh, to raise money for domestic violence awareness. So, very nice. In the uh, in the Ohio one that you were talking about, your team was it injuries or what happened? Just kind of players underperforming there those last uh, last few weeks. You know that yeah, a, a little bit. I, I I I think I just got I got lucky out. Now I was the second highest scoring team in the league, I think, but only by a few points. Uh, it just kind of my team plateaued. And didn't really come on. Uh, I ended up getting knocked out, uh, by, by, uh, Charles <laughs> Chill, uh, uh, in, in the, uh, third place game. Gotcha. No, actually, maybe, no, I, yeah, he's in the championship. So, uh, I'll be playing Charles, uh, this weekend, I believe. So, uh, I'm going against him in the FF statistics league as well. <laughs> or maybe I went against him last week. My, my leagues are kind of, Cross pollinating, and I'm forgetting who's in which leagues because I got so many people, and I'm in multiple leagues with now. So right. my apologies for the confusion there. Oh, that is all good. Let's jump in and preview the rest of the games as uh, the week 16 matchups. We did the three Saturday games on yesterday's episodes with Matthew Fox and Tony. Uh, Dyer, so me and you are going to knock out the rest of the games, including the Sunday night football game and the Monday night football game. We eating all day, bro. I'm hitting you every time. Every time you come as well, I'm going to hit you. Y'all not going to be able to do that. You don't want no problems, bro. You are my boy. I'm a man. It's about to get ugly. I want to score. Yeah. You don't want to talk so much. It's time to do now. Not just a good old-fashioned rear end whipping. To the house. And we're going to kick it off with, uh, obviously, my favorite team here, the Cleveland Browns, as they go up against the Baltimore Ravens in this one. Should be a good game. Baltimore, uh, coming into Cleveland, they are getting 9.5 points in this one and being given 78.5 points. Uh, seems like it's going to be a pretty easy Ravens win here with the way the Browns have been playing. The Browns giving up the 11th most points to running backs with 20 points a game, uh, 21st to wide receivers, 20.6. Uh, I think that means you're pretty much locked into Mark Ingram and Lamar. They've obviously been the stud you've been riding all season for this team, and I think you're still playing Mark Andrews. But what about Marquise Hollywood Brown? This uh, the secondary for the most part of the Browns has been good. I would imagine he's going to get uh, locked up with Denzel Ward for the most part. I don't think Ward shadows him all over the field, but Ward likely plays on him more often than not in this game. So does that scare you off of Hollywood Brown, or are you still going to play him, uh, knowing that this is Championship Week for fantasy? Well, you know it all comes. We're, we're at that point where it comes down to what your options are. Marquise Brown is a boomer bus guy. And if you, you know, if, if you're playing and your opponent on Saturday puts, puts up a bunch of points, he's got guys who just overperform and you know, you're probably down 20 or 30 or 40 points more than you expected to be. Then maybe you're going to pop somebody out else out that's a little bit, uh, safer and put in Marquise Brown. You know, he's shown that he can be explosive. He's just in an offense that sometimes doesn't throw the ball that much because they run the ball so well. Right. Now it could be, uh, it, it, I think the Ravens, they want to show that it was a fluke. The Browns beat them. And the Browns want to show that, you know, our season's been kind of a hot mess, but we can take care of this. So I feel like, well, well, I want to say there could be a breakout for OBJ. Man, that that Ravens secondary is is just uh, a, a nightmare to play against. Yeah. So 
potentially I could see the Ravens just grinding it out on the ground and that kind of hampers Hollywood. Right. So he could get you, you you know you may get his three catches for 85 yards and a touchdown. I I don't know if that's that's where I'm uh I, I don't know how risky I feel. You know, if it comes down if I'm looking at Hollywood Brown or uh Robert Foster, you know, or somebody Cole Beasley, you know, I'm probably going to go go Marquise Brown because I want the upside. You know, or Danny Amendola, you know, I, I want to go with somebody, you know, it's the last game of the season. You want the points. And, uh, yeah, m- unfortunately, Marquise has been a little bit inconsistent, inconsistent, but it's the nature of that offense. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad that you said that part. I do think is you're right. It's the nature of the offense. I, I think that's what it's going to be too moving forward. Like Marquise Hollywood Brown is, unfortunately going to be someone like Deshaun Jackson that you're just not going to know and a lot of it's going to come down to we just don't know what that offense is going to do Uh, I mean a lot of this game even the last time these two played each other uh you know the Browns they did they they in a way kind of blew Baltimore out I think it was like 40 to 25 and they actually only got seven of those points on like the last drive of the game where he threw a a touchdown to Willie I think it was Willie Sneed uh, where they actually they pretty much almost didn't even tackle him and just let him kind of run into the end zone so it it wasn't even as close as that indicated and I don't think that it ends up going out that way or ends up playing out like that on uh on Sunday so Marquise Hollywood Brown if if you were to guess if say you think he has an okay day here uh would that for you put him more as like a high-end wide receiver three maybe yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I certainly. Uh, if if I'm playing him, it's probably going to be in a wide receiver three or flex position. All right. So then I, I want to give you a couple names really quick. Then that are, are kind of in that high end wide receiver three territory. Would you play him over any of these guys? The I'm just going to go the the couple of guys because it's actually kind of like a loaded. With especially, I mean, we've talked about many a times how how weird this year has been for fantasy. Some of the guys here at the top end of tier three, you have got Odell, Cole Beasley, Jamison Crowder, Debo, Mike Williams. Would you play him over all those guys? Just a couple of those guys. I'd be hard pressed to play him over Odell. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I I just I gotta believe. He's, you know, they're going to try to force it to him. Uh, and so Odell, I think, is going to get the opportunity that maybe uh, Brown won't. And Mike Williams, I would probably play over him. But the rest of them, I'd probably, I, I, I would have Marquise in over Beasley, over Crowder. Uh, oh, who's the third uh, one? Debo. Debo was the last one. Oh. Oh no, I think I'd play Debo. You okay. know, Debo's getting it. Debo's getting the targets. I, I know Crowder gets a good amount of targets, but he he doesn't get a lot of yards. Uh, he'll have him and Beasley both will occasionally have these fluke games where they might break one, but for the most part, they're not they're not red zone threats. Uh, whereas Marquise Brown is going to get down the field. Uh, you know, he may get half the targets, but on an equal number of catches, uh, he's going to get substantially more yardage with the threat yeah. of a touchdown o- over um, Beasley and Crowder. Yeah, yeah. He, he's definitely by, by far the better home run threat out of those two, or out of those three, really, uh, with, with Beasley and Crowder linked on there. Uh, we've talked about Odell a little bit here. He is going up against a really good Ravens secondary. Uh, their defense is 24th against running backs, 16.1 points a game, 17th against wide receivers, 21.5. With that being said, for me, I'm finding it really hard to play anybody on this offense outside of Nick Chubb. Is there anybody else that you'd be willing to play? I know, uh, 
you know, Jarvis Landry has obviously been really good all this year. For me, he, he's kind of been their wide receiver one, uh, but he's dealing with a little bit of a hip issue now that came out today. Uh, might need surgery in the offseason on his hip, so that worries me a little bit as well going into a uh, a game that is a huge game for Baltimore because with a win, they do for sure lock up the number one seed, and uh, they do, I agree with you, probably want to show the league that the they can beat the team that last beat them. Yeah, Odell is. I I just feel like he's too good to not eventually have that game. Um, the targets are going to be there. You know, I I honestly I don't think it's Odell and Jarvis that have really been the issue. I think Baker has had a he's had a lot of issue getting himself set and, and making yeah. he's not making the tight window throws that he did last year. No, I agree. And, and that's led to, uh, you know, a lot of the frustration on the part of Odell and Jarvis. So it, it's, it's a tough situation, but all of a sudden it could all be gone and he could just start nailing those tight windows again. And, and good offensive players – especially ones that run as good a routes as Odell and Jarvis can get open against good defensive backs. It doesn't mean they're going to, you know, go off and have, you know, a Julio Jones game where he gets 15 catches or a Mike Thomas game where they get they're getting 15 catches, but they should certainly be productive. Probably the one that I would start though is I I'm very comfortable throwing Kareem Hunt in my flex. Okay. I think given given where uh, the Ravens are against running backs, you know they're twenty fourth against running backs. Or am I reading that backwards? No, no. And they're actually uh, they are. Well, the the difference with that is so twenty fourth is actually good. The higher the defense you are, the better you are. I guess it should be the way to put it. But the one okay. thing I will the one thing I will say in, in agreement with you on Kareem Hunt is something that we have seen really since he's come back is when the Browns are behind, Hunt is on the field more than Chubb because they just seem to be using him more in the receiving game. And I do think we can both admit the Browns are likely going to be behind in this game. Yeah, but uh, Chubb still does – he does a good job in the, in the receiving game. He, he's not – he doesn't do as good a job. Hunt is a phenomenal receiver. Yeah, he is. Uh, it, for – it was interesting if you think back to the off season and speculation about uh, where he might land after the suspension, and then the Browns signing him. Uh, you, you heard some talk about well, Hunt was only good because of Andy Reid's system, and now he's here and he's good in spite of Freddie Kitchen's system. So, yeah. Kareem Hunt is a baller. Uh, I, I think if the Browns are smart, they're they're going to figure out a way to have both of them on the field a lot. Um, but so far this year, they haven't shown any inclination to be smart. Yeah, that, that's the unfortunate part. All right, who are you picking, the Browns or the Ravens? I'm going with the Ravens. I'm taking the Browns just in, in hopes, in hopes that there's that little shot that they still have to make the playoffs. So I figure, why not? I'll just roll with it for one more week until they crush all my dreams and hopes again. And then I can stop worrying about it. Next up, Panthers and Colts uh, should be a, a decent game. Both uh, teams, unfortunately, already eliminated from the playoffs. Indy is getting 6.5 uh, points in this one and being given the 70% chance to win this game on the uh, the Colts side here. So the Panthers, the uh, number one defense for running backs here, twenty seven point three points a game. As we have seen the past couple weeks, they are they have been getting gashed against the run and wide receivers. They have not been much better here. Wide uh, giving up the twelfth most points, twenty three point seven. So Marlon Mack has a plus plus matchup this week. Uh, after coming back from the injury, has looked decent. It looked really good in that first game. Struggled a little bit last week. Uh, outside of him, which I'm, you know, I would assume that you think that matchup is good as well. So, what are your thoughts on Mac? And can you trust anybody else? Because this whole team, wide receiver wise, is just so beat up. I don't know if I can trust playing any of those guys like Pascal or Johnson. Uh, maybe Doyle, but even then, I'm a little bit uh, sketchy on him in a championship matchup. 
Well, Hilton came through the game last week uh, pretty healthy, and so I think he's just going to continue to improve. Uh, that doesn't mean he won't have something else pop up or he, he won't re-aggravate uh, the injury he had. Um, but he did come through last week's game in, in good shape. Uh, as far as Mac, you, you know, I, I've got him going in, uh, I believe, one, maybe two lineups. And I'll be honest, if, if he carries me to victory, there's going to be hell to pay in my house because he let my <laughs> wife down so bad last week and oh, knocked her out of the playoffs. That's not good. Uh, it, w- it was it, it was sad. Him and his one point nine points. Yeah. Uh, it, it was her, you know she had the best team in her league uh, and got knocked out in the playoffs. So, anyways. I think Mac is in for a big game, though. Uh, I I get confused by the lack of use in the passing game, though. Right. I mean, he caught 65 passes in three years in college. He's a capable pass catcher. Decent. He, he's decent in picking up uh, pass protection. I, I get it that the other two may be better than that, but it's not like he's he's – He's bad at it. They're just better, and sometimes that happens. But in that case, it's like they, when he's on the field, it opens up your offense and makes it more diverse. So why wouldn't you try to use him more in the passing game? I, I just don't get it. I don't know. Hopefully uh, he picks up a bunch of yards on the ground uh, or CMC doesn't uh, rack up a bunch of points. <laughs> I, I think the one thing that that may be going for this in this game for Mac is going to be game script with Will Greer making his first start. Yeah. So they're going to probably. I expect Carolina is going to play fairly conservative. They want to. They're working hard to try to get a uh, thousand yards receiving and a thousand yards rushing for Christian McCaffrey. Well, he's got his thousand yards rushing, and he needs another hundred and uh, 83 yards, I believe, to get to a thousand yards receiving. So he's going to need to average about 95 yards a week for the next two weeks to get that. And that, that's really what the Panthers are playing for is to get McCaffrey to that one thousand plus thousand and, and to see if Will Greer has any potential. Um, Greer in preseason, while not really connecting downfield, Showed the tendency to go deep, so it could it could bode well for Curtis Samuel uh, this game, and maybe they do have some splash plays. All right, so you mentioned Will Greer, and he is making his uh, his first NFL start for the Carolina Panthers. They are looks like moving on from the the Kyle Allen experiment. Uh, obviously, he was playing really good for them earlier in the season. Has has kind of struggled. Does more looking like the undrafted free agent we all thought. Uh, he was uh, when he uh, signed here with the Panthers. You know you're playing CMC. You just talked about it. They, they're they trying to get him that record. I think only two. I can't remember who it is off the top of my head now at the moment. Uh, there's only two other running backs, I believe, that have had 1,000 yards rushing and 1,000 yards receiving. I hope he gets it. I love CMC. Well deserved, and I, I think uh, I hope that he does get it, and I think he will eventually get it. So you know you're putting CMC in your lineup. You mentioned Curtis Samuel and the fact that Will Greer does like to throw the ball deep. DJ Moore has been a wide receiver one all season long. Uh, you know, he's someone that I was not expecting to be that good. I know when we talked at the beginning of the season, <coughs> excuse me, we both thought Curtis Samuel was going to have a really good year. And it seems like DJ Moore has taken that step forward and ha- contained it or continued to do that the entire season. So what are your thoughts on those two in a, in a, in a pivotal championship matchup again with a rookie quarterback making his first start against a defense that I mean they are sitting here as uh they give up 28 uh they're 28th against running backs with 14.5 points but eighth against wide receivers giving up 25.2 points a game you know a starting rookie quarterback in the championship finals is scary when you have to play uh Samuel or DJ Moore. Yeah. I mean, we've seen some, some rookies come out and have great first games. David Blau had a great first game. Duck Hodges played well. Kyle Allen played well. Not a rookie, but a second year guy. Drew Locke played well. 
Daniel Jones played well. So the precedent is set, but you you just don't know. Dwayne Haskins came in and shit the bed in his first game. Uh, it, it's I'd like to think that uh, that he's he's prepared. He's he hasn't. Uh, He spent some time on IR this season, and so he's been able to not – he hasn't been pushed. Kyle Allen played okay. Um, You know, maybe – he he maybe didn't play quite as good, I think, as uh, we thought, but he he played okay. He's not the answer. I think he's a career backup, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's great money if you can get it. Um so it it does make me a little nervous. I do have uh, DJ Moore in one league that I'm, uh, or not DJ Moore, um, Curtis Samuel, Samuel in one league, and mm-hmm. is it this one? Um, I, I'm going back and forth as to whether or not uh, I'm going to keep him in the lineup. Who are so your, I've got uh, Samuel, and my other options are Beasley. Um, okay. uh, I did pick up Greg Ward of the Eagles, but and I've got Robbie Anderson. So th- that's really my options, and you know, unless I all of a sudden get a hear some crazy news about Alan Hearns. Uh, but for the most part, it's it's coming down to uh, Greg Ward, who's who's looked pretty good. He's produced. Um, but there's nobody else in Philadelphia, right? You know, Robbie Anderson or Cole Beasley. Right now, I still have uh, Samuel in the lineup. It's gonna be uh, touch and go right up until uh, game lock at one o'clock on Sunday. Yeah. So hopefully, uh, we get some good news about how Greer's looked in practice. You know what I should do is I should I should. Uh, See what Mike Dempsey says because he covers the ja- well. That's the Jaguars, not the yeah. the Panthers. <laughs> Never mind. No, not Mike. You can Mike still Dempsey. see what Mike Dempsey has to say. I just don't know if it'll help you in your analysis on the on on starting Samuel or not. <laughs> yeah, so it's nervous, man. When you got to start a, a a player that's reliant on a rookie quarterback getting him the ball, it could be okay. It could be a hot mess. Yeah, for sure. All right, so who are you picking to win, the Colts or the Panthers? I'm going to go with the Panthers. As am I. I think Will Greer gets his first win as well. Next up, uh, unfortunately, kind of like the game we just talked about, not a whole lot to talk about fantasy-wise. Giants and Redskins. Washington is getting one point in this one, and the Giants are being given the 50% chance to win this game. On the Giants side here, the Redskins, uh, eighth most points to running backs with 21.4 points, uh, 18 to wide receivers, 21.0. So looks like Barkley is in line for another good game. Back to back good games for him would be huge as, as obviously he has had a very disappointing season. Outside of him though, who are you trusting at wide receiver? Is it Shepard, Tate, big play Slayton? We do know that Daniel Jones is back and in the lineup, so he will be starting this week against the Redskins. Well, I think Slayton provides the deep threat there in New York, and uh, Jones and him had had a connection early in the season when Jones uh, was starting before he got injured. So I'm comfortable starting Slayton. uh, Who's the, the Redskins? Defensive back is it Lance Dunbar or Quentin Dunbar? Uh, Quentin Dunbar. Somebody, their Quentin Dunbar. their cornerback. He's, yeah. I, I believe he's out, so that weakens the Redskins' uh, uh, defensive backs. They do have a, a pretty good pass rush, but I think Jones has shown that he's up to the task. Uh, so him starting, I'm not really concerned with his ability. I think he can run some, and he's willing to throw the ball downfield. Mm-hmm. Uh, Despite his low A dot in college, uh, I think that, you know, we're seeing that a lot of that is due to the talent he played with at Duke. Uh, I, I, I like Slayton. Slayton has shown that, uh, I, I think he's the real deal. There's, there's been some young wide receivers this season and Slayton and McLaurin in this game, uh, are two of the rookies that have really stepped up this season. 
Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm with you on Slayton, and I also think you can probably put uh, Shepard in a flex spot. I think Shepard's going to have a good game. He's really kind of bounced back since coming back from dealing with those concussions. I think he's he, he would be a decent play in this one as well. On uh, on the Redskins side here, you just mentioned him. I think it's just McLaurin. I mean, they give up the 18th most points to running backs with 18.1 points a game, and they are the fourth against wide receivers, so 26.8. So they are giving up a ton of points to wide receivers. We saw what McLaurin was able to do against that Philadelphia secondary. That gives up a ton of points as well to wide receivers. I think McLaurin, great play this week. He's going to be good to go, but that's it. I mean, I know this could probably be Adrian Peterson's last game. I mean, the they're not necessarily the best defense against the run. They're a little bit better than league average. I just I don't think you can trust anybody but McLaurin. Is there anybody else besides him that you trust for Washington? Well, in deeper leagues, I, I do trust Peterson. Um, okay, he's you know he's not gonna break away from the field. I know last year he had that big long run in the one game, but he's gonna get you the four tough yards in a cloud of dust. When you get down close to the end zone, he's going to punch it in. And now that Haskins is starting to settle in and he's playing better, he's connecting more with McLaurin. Um, he's, he's connecting with Kelvin Harmon some. Uh, I, he's starting to, to get into his rhythm now. And, you know, I, I liked Haskins coming out. I, I don't think he was put in a great spot because his coach hated him. Uh, he did need some seasoning, but he also uh, the the coach did need to to work with him and put him. You know, I, I remember the most frustrating thing as an Ohio State fan last year was the fact there were times when Ohio State needed to have the quarterback line up under the center and go forward for a yard. Yeah, and Urban Meyer literally said, "I don't have time to work on that," and, and it's. I I just, to me, that blows my mind. So Haskins has had to learn a lot of things, and now he's had to learn a lot of them under fire, and he's improving steadily. He's not taking big leaps, uh, but he is improving, and the kids got confidence, and so I think that sets up Adrian Peterson to be able to be a productive player this week. So if, if you can get 80 yards and a touchdown out of Peterson, I, I, I think that's a reasonable expectation. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I could see it. I'm not, I'm not as high as him, but you did, when you did say that you mentioned deeper league, so I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be against throwing him in there in a deeper league as well. But for me, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm fading Peterson a little bit. I did like what you said about Haskins though. I think the one thing you have to think about, and I know you know this is, He's just a one-year starter, so he's just like Mitch Trubisky coming in uh, when he came into his drafts, obviously younger as well. Uh, and I like what I've seen out of him at the end of this season. As you, you mentioned, not only is he having to learn a whole new offense, he's trying to have to, in all honesty, get used to NFL game speed as well. So it's completely different. As you mentioned, also got thrown in there with a, a coach that just did not seem to want to play him. So the what I've seen him progress through the back half here of the season is very encouraging. I'm excited to see what he does uh, next year. I think he could take a big leap forward uh, in that offense. Obviously, it's going to really depend on who they bring in as the coach and offensive coordinator, but I, I like Haskins. I like what I've seen out of him these past couple games. Uh, who are you picking to win, the Redskins or the Giants? I'm going to take the Redskins. As am I. Next up, the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, Atlanta, the hottest team in football here as of late. They're getting seven points and being given the 77% chance to win this one. Uh, they are going up against a Jacksonville Jaguars defense that also has been gashed on the run here, uh, against the run here as of late. Second most points to running backs, 23.8 points a game. Uh, and 22nd to wide receivers, 20.3 points a game. So with that being said, you know Julio's in your lineup, even though it is a tough matchup for wide receivers. But with the plus-plus matchup, are you starting Devonta Freeman? I I think, yeah. Uh, I, I think Freeman has probably the more concerning thing with Freeman now is the tendency to he, – he's not catching quite as many passes – and the tendency to get vultured at at the goal line. Okay. You know, Quadri Allison has vultured a couple touchdowns lately. They like Brian Hill, and they they keep giving him opportunities. 
Um, and then they're just passing the ball. I mean, Julio had 20 targets last week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> since Ridley went down, it's it's the Julio Jones show. Uh, and I've got the Julio Ryan stack in the Infinity Gauntlet League. Oh, very nice. Going up against uh, Chris twenty one twenty three, uh, and so it's we're projected to be right neck and neck. I've already won my first Infinity Stone for winning the league, and if I win the championship game, I get my second Infinity Stone. But if I lose the game. I lose my Infinity Stone to Chris, and Chris wins another Infinity Stone. And so that, you know, we have to get all five Infinity Stones to be able to reset the league and right. so on. Uh, you know, and Chris handed me my first law, or no, I think I eked out my, a win versus Chris, and Winter Soldier handed me my first loss. So. Gotcha. Yeah, it'll be well. The one thing I would say with uh, with Ridley going down is that uh, we obviously saw a couple other guys step up. Uh, when Hooper went down first, we saw a huge increase for Ridley. Then when Ridley went down, a guy like Russell Gage really kind of took a step forward. Austin Hooper has come back from injury two weeks ago, has slowly started moving back up. He was the tight end one before he went out with injury. So this being his third week back from injury, are you trusting throwing him in your lineup? Well, he's still the tight end six, uh, according yeah. to Fantasy Pros PPR. So he he didn't drop too far. Uh, I think the connection is still there. Uh, and without Ridley, uh, the pecking order to me still feels Julio Hooper, and and so I'm I'm very comfortable putting Hooper out there. He's shown over the course of this season when he's healthy <laughs> that he's got a real connection with Matt Ryan, and so. And unless you have a better option, uh, in which, according to Fantasy Pros, there's only five of them, uh, <laughs> yeah. you roll him out there and you stick him in your lineup. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I wasn't sold on starting him that first week, but he did get a little bit more targets in the second week. I think he's going to be good to go, especially, again, tough matchup in the secondary here for, for Julio. I still think Julio gets it done, uh, but they might try and lean a little bit more on Hooper than they have the past couple of weeks, so I like having Hooper in there. On the Jag side, Falcons are giving up the 20th most points to running back, 17.5 points a game, 14th most to wide receivers, 22.9 points a game. Uh, Chark might play. I believe he is still listed as questionable. So if he is in there, I'm playing Chark. Uh, he's just been phenomenal all season long. If not, obviously you're pulling him out of your lineup. Leonard Fournette, I think, is due for a bounce back game here. Not a great matchup. Still, Falcons good against the run. Uh, but he, what he does in the receiving game as well, I think is what's going to get him over the edge here a little bit for you. Uh, outside of Fournette and if Chark is available, are you playing Didi? Cause I feel like that's really the only other guy that has any fantasy value. Yeah, for the for the wide receivers, um, I, Didi's a, a floor guy. So if if you need ten points in a PPR, eight eight to eight to twelve points, you know Didi's your guy. I think if you're rolling the dice and you need upside, then uh, Chris Conley's the guy you you roll out. Um, Conley almost got me the victory last week in the uh, Ohio Fantasy Football League. Okay. Uh, he, uh, I, I put him in the lineup and, but he had what, a hundred yards and two touchdowns. Yep. Cause, uh, Chark was out last week, I believe. Yes, he was. Yeah. And, uh, so there's some connection there as well. Uh, it could be, it could turn into one of those, uh, I don't know if it'll be the 18 Rams where all three wide receivers are productive. Or more like the Falcons where you've got one guy that's super productive and two other guys that occasionally pop off. Or maybe that's more like the Chiefs with Tyreek Hill being super productive. And then one week it's uh, Sammy Watkins and one week it's Demarcus Robinson and another week it's McCole Hardman. Uh, so it's hard to tell because I think there's definitely a ceiling on Gardner Minshew. Yeah. And, and we saw that. Minshew's, you know, he's got spunk. That's really what he's got going for him. He 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 plays a little bit rec reckless. He 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 kind of has that Baker swagger, and and sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's interceptions. 
uh, he doesn't seem to get in quite as much uh, trouble or get quite as much negative press as Baker, but there, there's certainly some similarities in, I think, how they approach the game. So for the floor, I'm going to roll out DD. For the ceiling, I'm going to roll out Conley. All right. Fair enough. I like it. I had... Uh, I know we weren't able to do it together last week, but Conley was my pick to actually have the better game last week, and he came through, as as you were just talking about. Uh, so who are you picking to win this game, the Jacksonville Jaguars or the Atlanta Falcons? I'm going with the Falcons in a runaway. As am I. We are, we are in lock and step in a lot of these games here today. Next up, the Saints and the Titans. New Orleans is getting two points in this one and being given the 54% chance to win this game. They're going up against a very good Titans defense. Uh, they're right there at the middle of the league in both uh, uh, running backs and wide receivers. 15 most points to running backs, 18.7 points a game. 16th most to wide receivers, 21.9. That being said, Kamara Thomas, they're in. You, you just can't sit him. I know Kamara's having a disappointing season, but he still has all the talent in the world and is one of those guys that can make a fantasy day for you uh, on any given Sunday. So so he's in there. Thomas, I'm hoping he breaks the record. He's getting closer and closer. Uh, I'm hoping. I think he only needs 11 catches over the next two weeks, so hopefully he gets it. Uh, I can't imagine any way he doesn't. With us saying that Thomas and Kamara probably have good games here against the Titans defense, are you willing to play Breeze? Because a lot of people got down on him earlier in the year once he came back from the injury, struggled in the first game or two, and then has really kind of lit it up and has been a top three quarterback the past three weeks. So wait, the guy with the injured thumb came back wearing a brace on his thumb and we were disappointed in his performance? You know, it's crazy. Oh, word. But yeah, <laughs> I heard that there were people, yes, who were very disappointed with him. You know, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I think I'm good with Breeze, especially because part of it, part of what I've, I've started to hear this week, uh, especially on Sirius XM, I've heard a couple of the hosts talking about, uh, um, that the Saints want, they want to get Thomas that record. They want to, they, and they want to get it out of the way. So right. it could be one of those games where Thomas, uh, gets, you know, 15, 18 targets so they can kind of knock that record out of the way and then move on. They don't have to worry about it. They can worry about getting themselves set up for the playoffs or, or worry about, you know, the things they need to take care of. Um, so I, I think starting Breeze is, is definitely, uh, you know, he's probably a low end QB one. Okay. You know, we've seen some of these quarterbacks just going off with some crazy numbers. And so when you've got Lamar and you've got Jameis and you've got Mahomes, you know, and these guys putting up these 40 point games, 50 point games, uh, you kind of have to temper your expectations a little bit when it comes to somebody like Drew Brees, but he's certainly somebody that I'm not afraid to put in my lineup if I got him. On the Titans side here, I feel like it's kind of the same thing as the Saints. I mean, the Saints, uh, 29th most points to running backs, 14 points a game, but 6th most to wide receivers. They they have kind of turned that defense around a little bit there in the secondary. We're number one for a long time. Uh, sitting at 26.2 points a game. Uh, and just like the Saints, I think it's it's just Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown. I feel more than comfortable playing both of those guys in my lineup. Ryan Tannehill and Brown really have a great connection. Uh, I've, unfortunately, I feel like for all the Corey Davis truthers out there, they're sitting there thinking – they're looking at A.J. Brown being like, that should have been Corey Davis. Uh, Brown has really stepped forward. Uh, so with that being said, would you play Ryan Tannehill? Because the one thing I will say is Ryan Tannehill actually has one of the best completion percentages in the league right now, and he also does give you a pretty safe floor in rushing and possible rushing touchdowns as well. Yeah, I'm I'm good with Tannehill. I think he's showing that he has he, – he's not overextending himself. Um, you know, could very well be that his, the problem he was having, uh, was the same problem that Devontae Parker was having. Uh, Kenyon Drake was having. <laughs> Kenyon Drake was <laughs> yeah. having. Uh, and, uh, soon here, I think, uh, we'll find Sam Darnold having that same problem. Yeah. Uh, Jeez. So I, I think Tannehill is, you know, he's a back end QB one. Uh, he's a good athlete, played wide receiver in college. 
So that we're starting to see a theme now as the NFL moves forward with a lot of these guys that are, are more mobile. Daniel Jones is mobile. Uh, you know, Lamar Jackson is super mobile. Mahomes is, is mobile, but he's, you know, he's playing with the knee injury. So as these guys are, are picking up, you know, 25 yards a game, uh, maybe running it in, get scoring a touchdown, uh, that those those points are they still count and so when you have some guys like Tannehill and Tannehill has shown the confidence in AJ Brown and, and he's ta- it, it, honestly at any given minute I could see Corey Davis breaking out uh, okay. I think Davis is going to have to over some overcome some confidence issues he's been in a situation where uh he just didn't have a connection with Marcus Mariota. Uh, he, he was there for what three years. This is his fourth year. Uh, maybe it's his third year, but he was there with Marcus Mariota and they just never clicked. They never got it. Mariota struggled with injuries. Mariota just, it just didn't happen. And then AJ Brown came in and he did click with the quarterback. He had a couple flashes with Mariota. But then when Tannehill took over, Brown, without all of that three years of baggage, has clicked with Mariota. So I, I still believe Corey Davis is a super talented guy. Um, it'll come down to whether or not Arthur Smith and Mike Vrabel are going to run an offense that is willing to put up that kind of volume. They may, when you've got a guy like Derrick Henry, I think that there can, can be a tendency maybe sometimes to sort of turtle it and shut things down and keep it close. You want to keep Drew Brees off the field because you know he's got those weapons in Kamara and Michael Thomas and Ted Ginn and Traquan Smith. And so the tendency might be to kind of let's bring it in. We're going to grind it out. We're going to run Derrick Henry. And if he gets three yards on every carry, you know, we'll go for it on fourth down because three times four is 12, and that means we got a first down. Right. So there's some of that. I, I could see that happening. You know, Mike Vrabel is a tough guy. You know, we're very familiar. He comes yeah. from the Belichick tree, played at Ohio State, uh, was a linebacker that played tight end, and he just he he's in there. He's a fighter, and I think this team is set, taking on – that persona a little bit there. I I think they get surprised sometimes when AJ Brown catches a 15 yard pass and takes it 79 yards for a touchdown. I think it shocks them even because they're, they're more, he's got more of that grinded out mentality. So who are you picking to win the Titans or the saints? (laughs) It's a tough one because I could see it going either way, but I think I'm going to go with the Saints. Uh, yeah, I agree. The only reason I am going with the Saints is because I need the Titans to lose for the Browns to have a shot at making the playoffs. <laughs> so I'm just I'm trying to speak it into existence. Next right up, we're going to do the Bengals and the Dolphins. The Bengals are getting one point in this one and being given the 50.3 percent chance to win this game. Uh, much like a couple of the games we've talked about, is very limited fantasy options we're talking about in these two games. I think for the Bengals side here, they're going up against a bad Dolphins defense, third most points to running backs, 22.9 points a game, and second most to wide receivers, 28.3. That being said, for me, it's just Mixon and Boyd that I'm firing up for the Bengals. Uh, Would you add anybody else to that, or are those the only two guys for you as well? The only thing that I could see is – in Superflex, the temptation to start Andy Dalton because I Miami you. is so bad. Yeah, I could see that. I, I, I so, honestly could see him being a low-end QB2 this week or maybe even middle-tier QB2. I could see it. I, I have a situation in one of my games where my it's a Superflex and my three quarterbacks are Aaron Rodgers against, what are they playing, the Bears, I think? Yes. Or the Vikings? No, Vikings. Yeah, Vikings. Uh, Andy Dalton against the Dolphins and Josh Allen against the uh, Patriots. Yeah, that is tough. And so it's like, you know, do the the Dolphins or the Dolphins are the easy matchup. Yeah. A- am I gonna am I am I gonna gamble that 
Belichick is going to give Josh Allen fits. Uh, so start Dalton or am I going to gamble that Aaron Rodgers has kind of sucked this year and, and, uh, the Vikings will continue that kind of torn on that decision right now. Right now I have Dalton in over Allen. That's, that's what I would do. If, if I'm being honest, if for me, the only reason I'm playing Rodgers over both of them is because of how bad Minnesota's secondary is. And then I'm with you. I think just because I do think Allen probably ends up having a good game. I actually think the Bills have a chance to win that game. I, I know you weren't on the pod with us uh, when we talked yesterday. Uh, I actually picked the Bills to win that game, but I think it's more of a defensive struggle. So I would take Dalton's upside in the bad matchup, and same with Rodgers going up against the Minnesota. While they're known for stopping the run, they have been really bad on the back end, and I think Devontae Adams is going to eat some in that one, which we'll end our end the podcast with that, obviously. But uh, I, I like Rodgers. In this week as well. Yep. All right on the on the Dolphins side, uh, Cotton kind of the same thing. They have been uh, the Bengals really struggled against the run here. Six most points to running backs, twenty two point six points a week, but actually really good against the wide receivers. Might be due to the fact that they get run all over. <laughs> uh, but they are the twenty third uh, against wide receivers with twenty points a game. Regardless of how good they are at wide receivers, I think Parker's in. He is. Just had a resurgent of resurgent years here. Uh, has shown if if you were able to hold on him all these years, he is he is you know provided you plenty of good faith back uh, with the year that he is having. I also think uh, Fitz Magic has a decent game in this one, and those are by far the only two players I am starting on the Dolphins side. Uh, are those the only two for you as well? Yeah, it's uh yeah I I've I've not been on the Patrick Laird train. Uh, um, yeah, neither have I. <laughs> depending on the landscape and the options, potentially you might throw Mike Gesicki in. He's been getting uh, six or so targets a game for the past four, five, six weeks. Mm-hmm. So he's starting to come along, and he's he's talented enough that when he starts getting the, the volume consistently, he's going to start to make some things happen. He's, he's a, a great athlete, and so... If you're rolling the dice, you know, if you're looking at, if your options are, say, Daniel Fells or someone like that, you know, Dawson Knox, you know, I could see saying, you know, I'm going to roll Gasicki out there instead. Yeah. I, I, he is, a, he obviously has that, uh, the touchdown upside chance as well here going up against the Bengals. I would, I think if you're sitting in that, I'm trying to think of where I'd probably rank him if I had to, uh, probably the upper tier of tight end twos. I would say I'd probably take a chance on him. I do think, I don't want to say it'll be a shootout, but I could see a lot of offensive points getting put up in this one. So I'm with you on Gasecki. I did kind of forget about him. I would not be against playing him either. Uh, who, who are you taking the Dolphins or the Bengals? I'm going to take the Dolphins. As am I. I think the Dolphins get a, get another win here and ha- hurt themselves by winning yet again. Next up, uh, my fantasy analysis is going to be very easy on this game because I am avoiding almost everybody in it, and that is the Steelers and the Jets. Pittsburgh is getting 3.5 points, um, being given the 52% chance to win this game. For the Steelers, the Jets defense, 23rd most points to running back, 16.5 points a game. Nine most points to wide receivers, 24.9. It does not look like we're going to get Juju back again this week. Uh, He's not listed on the injury report, so maybe he plays, but uh, I, there's still a lot of talk about that knee bothering him. Regardless, him being back, I don't know if you can trust him with Hodges out there. I know him and Washington have a pretty good, uh, they've had a pretty good connection here the past couple weeks. I don't, I could not play Washington out there either uh, with, with them going up against him. And the Jets' secondary is not great. Still, I just I can't trust anybody. Maybe outside of James Conner, I think if you if you've got him, you're playing him because you know he he could have a okay game here. But outside of Conner, I'm avoiding any and all Steelers. What about you? Yeah, I I'm on the James Washington train, man. Okay, I, I think that uh, he's 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 another boom bust guy that if if I if I need points. And I, I, I need to take a shot. I'm looking for a puncher's chance. Uh, Washington is one of those guys. Uh, Hodges, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting to see when you look at some of the, 
some of these backup quarterbacks that have came into the league this year, they all sign, kind of profile sort of the same way these smaller school, uh, you know, I, I I know you doubt me, and I'm just gonna come in here and and I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my shots. I don't have anything to lose. Uh, while Hodges has cooled off some, uh, it's certainly uh, he's shown that he he's willing to take the shot when he gets it. Yeah, Juju so far it looks like uh, according to uh, Roto World. He he wasn't on the injury re- report today. Yeah, no, but they yeah, said he he's only moved. tentatively yeah. scheduled to play. So uh, they could be taking it really careful. It could be that you know they're not going anywhere. So why are we going to put him out there and t- take any chances? But I, I like James Washington as a, a you know in a deeper league as a flex player. He's somebody I like. Okay. All right. Uh, the Jets side here, they are going up against a very good Steelers defense. 27th most points to running backs with just 14.6 points a game. 25th to wide receivers, 19.8. So they are in the top 10 in both categories here. Very stout defense as we have seen all season long. And that is why I am fading all my Jets. I just, I, I honestly don't even think that it's about them and their talent. We mentioned it earlier and Sam Darnold getting Adam Gaste. I think this whole offense, much like Miami, is getting Adam Gase. I just, I can't play anybody. I, maybe, maybe Le'Veon Bell, just because he does get some receiving work, but even then, I think he's a, at best a middle tier RB2. Is there anybody from the Jets that you feel comfortable throwing in, uh, your championship lineup? You know, it, I, I know earlier when we were talking about, uh, uh, who were we talking about playing, uh, and Jamison Crowder was one of the options. You know, he is somebody that's going to give you a floor. I think he does get the targets. Um, so he, he could give you one of those eight catch for 70 yard kind of games. Yeah. It was Hollywood. And a PPR, Brown, that's, that's a, you know, that's a 15 point game. Yeah. Um, but he could also give you a four for 21, uh, kind of game. I, I think Bell. If you're in the championship right now, uh, chances are, uh, you got there with Bell as one of your top three backs. So unless it's a shallow, uh, starting lineup, you're, you're going to be rolling Bell out there if he's on your team. He's going to get you, you know, 12 to 15 points, you know, those RB2 numbers. Um, and he may go off. He, he's, he's a good back. But it, it's with, with Adam Gase. Uh, I just I, I've started to throw my hands up. You know, there have been games where it's tailor made for Robbie Anderson, and Anderson will get two targets. Yeah. Or games where you know it's tailor made for Le'Veon Bell to get ten targets and 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 twelve carries, and he gets you know twelve total touches. It's just one of those things where you just don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I, I think you probably you probably have better luck uh, putting money on who Gase is going to blame the failure on as opposed to who's actually going to score you some points. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you on that. Who are you picking to win, the Jets or the Steelers? I'm going to go with the Steelers. Yeah, as am I. Next up, your Lions and the Denver Broncos. Denver is getting seven points in this one and being given the 64% chance to win this game. On Denver's side here, they're going up against a Lions defense that has really struggled here in the back half. Uh, fourth most points to running backs, 22.8 points, and fifth most to wide receivers, 26.6. That being said, I think it's just uh, Philip Lindsay and Cortland Sutton and Noah Fant. I almost forgot about Noah Fant. Those three uh, obviously have been the studs for Denver all season long. I'm throwing them in there. They all should have really good games, but that is it for me. What about you and Denver? Um, You know, I, Fant is still questionable with the shoulder, so I, I might temper my expectations with him. Super talented guy. Um, you know, Drew Locke has looked great. He, he's not afraid. He's, the game doesn't seem too big for him. 
Uh, there's certainly questions rolling out a rookie in, in the championship, but in a super flex, you know, you, you might not have a better option and he's going against a crappy defense. So I, I could see making the case to put lock in over, you know, some of these really low ceiling quarterbacks. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm probably going to try to stay with Sutton and stay with Lindsay. Mm-hmm. But given how bad Detroit's defense is, you never, this could be one of those 75 yard and two touchdown games. Uh, oh, who, what the hell is the other? Royce, Royce Freeman. Freeman. Yeah. On the Lions side here, they are going up against a, a decent Denver defense here. Uh, 22nd to running back, 16.5 and 19 to wide receivers, 21.9. So, Right there in the in the upper half of both uh, running backs and wide receivers, so they've really kind of turned it around under Vic Fangio. That being said, I think uh, Danny Amendola, who has looked really good here with Marvin Jones out, is obviously getting a lot of targets. And Kenny Galladay, even though I know he, you might not even be in the championship round right now if you played Kenny Galladay last week with as bad as his game was, uh, I do think both of them have good games here in this one against the Broncos. Uh, what about you? Are you playing either, neither, both? And are you, I guess Wes Hills is the, the one everybody's been talking about. I personally don't think I could play him at running back, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. You, you have to be in dire straits to play Wes Hills. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I didn't mind, I don't mind seeing Hills get the opportunity. Uh, it's certainly, uh, he, he hasn't shown, a whole lot. Yeah, he had the multi touchdown game, but I think in that game he only averaged about two yards of carry. Uh, and he's got a super upright rushing style. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. But uh, rumor has it carry on Johnson's going to be active this week as well. So Ooh, who I, knows uh, what's going to happen. Uh, yeah. Honestly, given where they're at, I think they need to just keep him shut down myself. Um, yeah. And then just. Uh, all Galladay all the time. Go back to that first game Blau started. Don't be afraid to chuck it at him and let him make plays. You know, he, he's, he's a big, fast wide receiver. Uh, I've never been, uh, never been on, uh, Danny Ambulin, Ambulance Dola. Dola. Yeah. Yeah. I, I knew you weren't, but, uh, I mean, he, he's had a couple good games here now since Marvin Jones went out. So. He has. If you're looking for a low-end PPR option, I, I I don't think there's much worse. Now, of course, I say that he's going to go out there this week and catch like two balls for 10 yards and then get hurt. But if he doesn't, he still could end up having a good game for you. So I, I'm not advocating him as like a, a wide receiver one or two, but as a, a, a flex option if you're struggling with injuries at, uh, on your team and you're in the championship game. Uh, who are you picking to win, your Lions or the Denver Broncos? I'm going to go with uh, my Lions. Okay, so I think we finally have disagreed outside of me trying to speak the Browns playoff wins into existence. I'm I'm going to go with the Broncos in this one. Next up, Raiders and Chargers. Uh both uh nothing really to play for. Raiders technically have not been eliminated, but uh even lower chance than the Browns to get in, unfortunately. Uh, Chargers have 7.5 or being given 7.5 points in this one and the 72% chance to win this game. For the Chargers, the Raiders defense, 13th most points to running backs, 19.9 points, 7th most to wide receivers, 25.3. Gordon, Eckler, and Keenan Allen, I think, all have to be in. Even though Allen has been kind of kept out of the red zone, or red zone, the end zone, much like Mike Williams, Allen has still been coming through for you all year, as have Gordon and Eckler outside of last week. Uh, so I think all three are in. But what about Mike Williams and Hunter Henry? Mike Williams uh, has found the red end. God, I keep wanting to say the red zone. The end zone the past couple weeks, which has really kind of boosted his numbers back up to what a lot of us thought he would do this year. Uh, and Hunter Henry had a decent game up until the fumbles and just seemed not really to get in uh, cohesiveness there with that offense. Uh, are you playing Williams or Henry in the championship game? I am most definitely playing Williams. Okay. Uh I think, you know, he broke out, he broke his touchdown drought. Uh, there was clearly a reasonable expectation that he would not be nearly as efficient in scoring touchdowns this year as he was last year. Uh huh. But they, they never stopped taking the shots. 
and Rivers will continue to take those shots. Uh, the Raiders are a team that gives up yardage and pass plays, uh, and so I think William Williams is going to keep doing what he's doing, and Rivers is going to keep taking the shots. Do I don't think Williams outscores Allen, but I do think Williams, you know, can have have one of those. Williams is uh, another one of the. He's the, the you know four for ninety and a touchdown guy on seven targets. He doesn't need a lot of targets to produce because he's doing his work twenty thirty yards down the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, Henry, uh, I'm a little torn. He's one of the best tight ends in the game. Uh, he, they like him. He, he produces. But it can be up and down. It can be, you know, three targets one game, nine targets the next game. And so you just, you, you don't always know. Uh, I feel like if, if you've got Henry on your team, he's probably your best tight end. And when you get in the finals, you're going to play your best players. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, there, there's not a, a lot of teams that are going to be sitting there with Kelsey and Henry. And going, oh, who do I start? Uh, most teams are, you, it's Kelsey or, or it's going to be, uh, Hunter Henry and Charles Clay. You know, something like that. And it's, you know, it's a no brainer. You, you start Hunter Henry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Let's see here. What do we got? Raiders side. 12th most points to running backs, 20 points a game, and 31st most points to the wide receivers. So, obviously, one of the best defenses against wide receivers and just 16.5 points a game. We know Josh Jacobs is going to be out. DeAndre Washington in had a good game last week. With the defense as good as they are against wide receivers, in my opinion, you can't play any of those guys. Tyrell Williams, after having such a hot start at the beginning of the year, has really kind of fallen off the cliff. Did bounce back, had a good game last week. Or I believe it was two weeks ago, but it has just outside of that not really looked that good. Uh, so for me, it's just DeAndre Washington and Waller, the baller that I am playing from Oakland's side. Who are you playing uh, from the Raiders in your championship lineups? Uh, that's pretty much it for me. I, okay. Uh, you know, I, I a case can be made for Jalen Richard you know, to get some passing down work, but... It looks like, uh, I, I forget, somebody tweeted it out, uh, and, I, and earlier in the season when Jacobs missed a game, um, the, the target distribution and, or the touch distribution between Richard and uh, Washington, it was about a 70-30 split. And the run, the run touches versus passing targets were pretty equal for both players. So Washington is definitely the the going to be the lead back there. Yeah. Now, if they get in a p- situation where they're down by, you know, three scores, then I think I could see them taking Washington out and putting Richard in because that's all they're going to do. But if they're still putting up some semblance of are we going to run or are we going to pass? Uh, it's likely going to be uh, uh, DeAndre Washington. Is yeah. that his name? Yeah, 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 what? yeah. It is DeAndre Washington. Yes, yeah. I like him this week. I think he's going to have a good one. Had a really good game last week. Uh, or not what last week? Two weeks ago with with him being out. So uh, I like him this week, especially. It is a plus matchup here with the Chargers. Uh, so who are you picking to win? The Raiders or the Chargers? I'm going to go with the Chargers. As am I. Very interesting game right here, uh, as this will likely decide the NFC East. Uh, the Cowboys and the Eagles. Dallas is getting two points uh, in this one and being given the 54% chance to win this game. Let's start with the Eagles side here. Eagles are going up against a very good Cowboys defense. 19th most points to running backs, just 17.5 points a game. 26 to wide receivers, 19.5. So they are very good on the defensive side of the ball. That being said, I think Miles Sanders continues to have good games. I mean, it's it's been nice to see as someone who has been a very high proponent of him since 
last off season and being the best running back in this class. He's just he's almost caught up to Josh Jacobs now, uh, and, and I think uh, has really kind of proven us right on him being better, even though. Jacobs had a good year, and I'm not trying to say anything bad about Jacobs now, but uh, Miles Sanders, especially being in a timeshare all beginning of this year, I think the first at least five, six games has really kind of come on strong. Jordan Howard, still questionable. Even if he plays, I'm all in on Miles Sanders. That being said, it's just Ertz and Goddard. I mean, this wide receiver core is banged up and the Dallas Cowboys secondary is good so if I have to pick players on the Eagles I'm just playing Sanders, Ertz and Goddard. Uh, does that change at all for you? You were talking about how you have Greg Ward Jr. in one of your leagues are you trusting in Ward? You trusting in any of these other wide receivers or is it just the tight ends and Sanders for you as well? It's it's a tough call on Ward because he, he is producing uh, he's he's doing everything he can with what he has to work with, and, and so the the fact that there's nobody else there matters. I think our Sega Whiteside hasn't looked great. It, he just hasn't. He, he you know I he looks like somebody who's going to be a a third year breakout, or the stereotypical third year breakout wide receiver. At least that's what he looks like to me this year. Yeah. Um, you know, Nelson Aguilar is Nelson Aguilar. Uh, you know, he's going to drop it. Um, but Ward is is playing. And whether he just is in a situation where he's like, man, I don't have anything to lose. And if I want it, 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 it's right there in front of me. And I, I have to go take it if I want it. Because of where I come from, they're not going to give it to me. I got to go take it, and that's how he's playing. Um, you know, he he could be worthy of a roll of the dice, but man, Sanders has looked explosive. Yeah. I, I've uh, I, I've really enjoyed watching the way he's produced now that he's taken over. Uh, there are times, man, where he's he's getting to the edge, and man, he just explodes through the hole. Yeah, and, uh, it, it looks nice. It's it's uh but it's it's Zach Ertz. Drop, 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 drop. Sanders <laughs> and Goddard, drop, drop, ward. Yeah. So Yeah, it's it's unfortunately a little uh disappointing as well because Man, seeing how good Miles Sanders has been, if only they had been just rolling with him as a starter from the beginning, I honestly think they probably could have won more games. But that that's just something that I am a huge Miles Sanders believer, as you know. Uh, so it, it's, it's, but it is great to see him balling out the way that he has, because there's a lot of people who were kind of poo-pooing on him earlier when he kind of struggled. Now that he's gotten really the full lion's share, what he's been able to do in the receiving game and running the ball has just been phenomenal. On Dallas' side here, this is where things are going to be interesting for me. So they are going up against a Philly uh, defense that is stout against the run. 26 points against the running back, 15.5 points a game. But they are horrible on the back end. They've been giving up plays all year long. Third most points to wide receivers, 28 points a game. You still have to play Zeke. You're not taking him out. It is going to be a tough matchup. But all it really takes is a touchdown for him to come through for you. I still think he gets you double-digit points. Now, for me, if I knew Dak was going to be fully healthy and fine to play in this game, Cooper and Gallup are easily in your lineups. They should have big games here. And all the news is that Dak is going to play and he's going to be okay. He does have an AC joint injury, which we have seen has messed up a lot of running backs this year. Why that's a big deal is because all they are doing, in essence, is taking hits. Dak has to throw with that shoulder. It's not his non-throwing shoulder. It's his right shoulder. To me, that is a big deal. Not only is it could take one big hit to knock him out, but they are shooting it up from everything I heard today when they were talking about they'll shoot him up with, with all kinds of Toradol and other stuff in that shoulder. I am not 100% sure that Dak is going to be the Dak we have seen all season. And if that's the case, I do think that that hurts Cooper and Gallup. That all being said, it is a plus-plus matchup. So what are your thoughts on this going into what is a huge game, not just for them NFL-wise, but for us and our fantasy championships? You know, they, uh, according to Adam Schefter and Roto World, uh, the Cowboys did not list Prescott on their final injury report. Man, it just reeks of gamesmanship. Now, if, if they 
if we get to Sunday and they don't play Dak after such limited practices or yeah. virtually not practicing um, and then not listing him on the injury report, uh, the Cowboys would likely expect a big, big fine. Yeah, yeah, um, that's for sure. That being said, I, I think if Dak gets his shoulder shot up so he can play, you know, maybe they've determined, you know, we can't really – you're as long as you don't take the exact same type of shot, you're not going to damage it anymore. So that means Dak has to not run. He's got to, when, when he feels the heat, he needs to go all Eli Manning and turtle up instead of trying to take off and escape. Whether he can do that, I guess we'll wait to see, but it wouldn't surprise me if Zeke uh, gets a season high in targets. Yeah, I, I yeah. honestly think I, I'm right there with you. I think Zeke is Zeke might be in for a huge game in this one. You know, if they're if they're they're all the, they're going to go look. We know we've got Jason Witten and we've got Zeke, and within ten yards of the line of scrimmage, and we've got Randall Cobb. So we've got all these weapons that we can deploy close. And you know, if you get five yards twice, you got a first down. You don't have to throw it way down the field. Yeah. But all of a sudden, everything starts creeping up, and you're playing against the, one of the worst secondaries in the league. Now, all of a sudden, it doesn't take it only takes a couple steps for Gallup or or for uh, Cooper to get by those subpar defensive backs, and now they're on the run. As long, and maybe instead of Dak having to complete the pass 35 or 40 yards down the field. He's only having to complete it 20 yards down the field, but the result is the same, a long touchdown. Yeah, I mean, that's what – so it's going to be interesting. The stuff that you were talking about with Dak first, they said that he's supposed to throw on Saturday. So I would imagine we're going to get some kind of word on how that is. I am surprised that he got left off their injury report because he hasn't practiced all week, and they've been talking about it being an AC joint sprain. Now, maybe – Maybe it is a little bit of gamesmanship in the other way that they're trying to make us think Dak is is not going to be good and he's going to come out and fling it all over the place. I think we both agree, unless something comes out Saturday and they say that it's not going to be Dak and Cooper rushes playing, Cooper's got to be in your lineup. He has been phenomenal all year, and that hurts my heart to say it, but he has been. Uh, I mean, so he's got to be in there. I think if you hear Dak is good to go, that's when I throw Gallup in because I do think both guys have a chance to have huge games in this one. But if you hear a little bit of worry about him, then I, I'm with you. I mean, you're like, like we are. We, I said earlier, you're not pulling Zeke out anyways. But I think if there's a little bit of worry about his shoulder, it could you could be in for a huge day for from Zeke. Which would be welcomed if you're a Zeke owner because, again, he is having a tough matchup here, going into a tough matchup with this Eagles defensive front. Let's see. Who who are you picking to win as this will, again, like I said, likely decide who gets in as the NFC East winner? Are you taking the Cowboys or are you taking the Eagles? I am uh, going to take Jason Garrett and the Eagles. Eagles, yeah, that's a good call. I'm, I'm with you. Jason Garrett <laughs> is going to mess that up and give the Eagles the win as well. Yeah. I was, as uh, I talked about this with Matt and Tony yesterday, I was firmly on the Cowboys up until all this stuff with with Dak uh, and the shoulder. I think the Eagles do find a way to get it done because I do think Dak is more beat up than they are leading on to. So I am taking the Eagles. Next up, the last afternoon game, Cardinals and Seahawks. Uh, Freaking Cardinals, man. I'm still mad at them. Not their fault. They, they, they executed a great game plan. Shouldn't be mad. Seattle, 9.5 points in this one, uh, being given the 79% chance to win this game. For the Seahawks side here, Cardinals, uh, 10th most points to running backs, 20.1 points a game, and 12th most to wide receivers, 24.4. So Carson and Lockett, I think, are, are virtual locks for your lineup, especially how well look Lockett looked last week. You know, we had both talked about leading up to this. The leg injury was kind of scary. Looked like he was finally back in as the old Lockett. So I think you're good throwing and, and firing him up. Uh, but what about DK Metcalf? Uh, he's filled in admirably. Admir- my goodness, I can't talk admirably. Easy for you to say. Yeah, not really. I was fumbling all over myself. Uh, the, uh, 
uh, the past couple of weeks with Lockett being out. Uh, but now Lockett is back. Looked good, as I said last week. Metcalf still had a decent game. Do you expect him to continue to be in that wide receiver two discussion? Or does he drop a little bit knowing that Lockett is back and fully healthy? Well, I think DK has established what his role is. Uh, he's a red zone threat. Yeah. He runs good intermediate routes. You know, he's not going to run those quick breaking routes. That's just not his game. And Pete Carroll basically has said, I'm just not going to ask you to do that. So we're going to take what you do and we're going to let you do it well. Uh, that being said, I, I could see his targets dropping by a couple, but I don't think it really affects his game. Um, because he's, he's, he now, he's got a clear and established role on that team. He's got the trust of Russell Wilson. Wilson, you know, that's his jump ball guy now. Yeah. He can go get it. Wilson isn't afraid to, to heave it in his general direction because Metcalf, uh, as long as he doesn't have to turn and, you know, come out of a dead sprint and turn and go to the side, then Metcalf, you know, he'll catch the back shoulder. He'll he'll leap over the defender and catch it. So his his role is secure, and I think you know you roll him out there as your wide receiver three without hesitation. I like it. I like it. I'm I'm with you. I've been. I mean, you know, I've loved DK Metcalf since last year. Uh, you know, we were one of the few team or teams duos that were not off AJ Brown when he landed there in uh in Tennessee we we kind of wavered a little bit and then both said you know what he's got too much talent he should be good there and I'll, I'll give you a lot of props on this too going off subject a little bit you even said when Ryan Tannehill came in you thought AJ Brown would soar up well you were dead right on that and when when DK Metcalf landed in Seattle, you kind of came over to my side and was like, dude, DK is so talented, and this is the perfect landing spot for him. You thought he was going to be good, and, and he has. He has definitely lived up to, it. in my opinion, the hype that was put on him being a really good wide receiver prospect has been a great place for him. I'm with you. I'm glad that uh, you uh, you agree to that and that he should be in your lineups, I, I think. Just he's he's been great all season long. If you were able to steal him at the low end of your rookie drafts this year, due to a lot of people being scared about his three cone drill, uh, you are loving life at the moment for him, no doubt about it. On the Cardinals side here, the Hawks defense, sixteenth uh, against running backs, eighteen point five points a game, fifteenth to wide receivers, twenty two point seven. Kenyon Drake, if you had the balls to play him last week. Uh, he likely led you to a championship game here. So are you playing him again? And are you high all on uh, Christian Kirk or Larry Fitz in this one as well? Yeah, I, I think Drake has established himself as the running back to have in uh, Arizona. Um, they use him to run the ball. They throw the ball to him. Everybody else is just a backup now. Um Kirk and Fitz are, are hit and miss. It's, it's tough to trust them, uh, because you don't know which one it's going to be necessarily. And when, when, uh, oh, Kyler Murray gets to running around, it, it, he doesn't always look to throw because he, he sees the field wide open. And so he runs, um, and he's elusive. I, I love Christian Kirk's talent. Um, and so, but they're, they're both, they're, you know, flex plays at best for me. Yeah. I, I just, I just don't know who to trust there. Uh, it, you know, other than Kenyon Drake. Yeah. And Kyler <laughs> Murray, because Murray is, you know, he'll get you the rushing touchdown. He'll get yeah. you 50, 60 rushing yards, uh, and with 200 yards passing. That's great, but 200 yards passing with one one passing touchdown, that doesn't do a whole lot for your wide receivers. Yeah, yeah. Murray's had a pretty safe floor all season. I'm, I'm glad that you brought him up. Yeah, I'm, 
I'm hoping that next year, I think Kirk will be able to turn it around next year. I think him being injured as much as he was in the beginning of the season really kind of affected his and Murray's chemistry. He's he's definitely getting targeted a lot, just not being able to do a lot with it. I think give him a year in Kingsbury's offense, he'll be there. And, and there was a lot of talk. I don't know if you got a chance to watch the, the game against the Browns. Uh, last week when they played each other, there was a lot of talk on the telecast there that uh, Larry Fitzgerald might be back for one more year. He's really enjoyed playing uh, with these guys and in Kingsbury's offense, so that would be definitely interesting. It's so, we were talking about a little bit on the podcast. You know, there's so much off-season stuff that's already like I cannot wait to sit down. You know, we'll we'll, we'll actually be able to talk more in the off-season. I, I'm hoping that we'll still be able to do the two podcasts a week like we were last year. And there's so much stuff that we we're going to be able to talk about. I cannot wait. It felt like last year's was a little bit uh, slower than the news that we've got this year with, especially even on this team more with Kenyon Drake. What happens with DJ? So. All this, all this stuff, and uh, I can't wait to to get into it more with you then. Uh, so, who are you taking though, Seattle or Arizona in this matchup? Seattle, as am I. The Sunday night football game uh, at the beginning of the year looked like it was going to be a really good one, and not so sold on that. Now we have got the Kansas City Chiefs and the Chicago Bears. KC getting six points in this one and being given the seventy one percent chance to win this game. The Chiefs' uh, defense here, 5th most points to running backs, 22.6 points a game. 29th most points to wide receivers, just 17 points. I I mean, it's a plus-plus matchup at the running back position, no doubt about it. Kansas City, while they've improved a little bit, especially getting uh, Chris Jones back there on that defensive line, I just don't think you can trust Cohen or Montgomery. Montgomery's had a couple breakout games, but they just, for whatever reason, will not commit to him. I would not be surprised if he has a great game here, but I just don't think you can trust him because I don't think they know what they want to do with him, unfortunately. And and really the same thing with Tariq Cohen. I don't think you can play either one of them. Uh, For me, the only player on the Bears I'm playing is Allen Robinson. Regardless of the matchup, he has been phenomenal all season long. What are you doing if you own any of these Bears players, uh, and you are, what, who are you putting in your championship lineup? Uh, the only one that I'm rolling with is Robinson, and if I'm feeling risky, uh, Say it. Uh, I'm, I might roll out Anthony Miller. Yes, I was hoping you'd bring him up because you were on him before he got hot and you stayed on that train. He has been definitely a – you could call him a league winner if he continues moving it forward, has been on fire since week 11. Uh, so do you think he has a good game in this one? You know, the Bears have a, a pretty stout defense. Uh, what twenty seventh most against the pass? Yes. So with Trubisky, I I struggle to buy into two wide receivers producing at a high level consistency consistently. Now that being said, I think Robinson is definitely the number one and is going to get the the lion's share of the opportunity. But Anthony Miller can produce on eight targets. He can give you some great numbers. Yeah. So, you know, if Robinson gets 12 targets and Miller gets eight, it wouldn't surprise me to see each of them with 100 yards and a touchdown. But if I have to put my money on one of them doing that, I'm going to put it on Robinson. Right. Yeah, so he, he's definitely Miller is, Miller is somebody that I'm looking at as a wide receiver three flex play because I'm just scared uh, of Trubisky. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, Robinson has definitely been the most consistent throughout the season, but as I said, uh, Miller has just, he's been on a hot of hot streaks uh, here since uh, about week 11. On uh, the Chiefs side here, the Bears defense, 17th most points to running backs, 18.5 points a game, 27 to wide receivers, 18.9. Regardless uh, with the, the matchup here with running backs, which is better, I don't think you can trust anyone outside of Mahomes, Hill, and Kelsey. Is there anybody else on the Chiefs you'd play? Spencer Ware, baby. Really? Okay, tell me why. No, hell no. Oh, okay. I was, I was, I'm really intrigued to hear your reasoning there. So <laughs> no, I, I mean, hell, Damian Williams is supposed to be back this week. So yeah. you're back. You've got Ware. You got Williams. You got McCoy. It, Darwin Thompson. 
who knows what's going to happen <laughs> back there. It wouldn't surprise me if McCall Hardman led the team in carries. Yeah, that would be definitely an Andy Reid thing to do. I would assume you're taking the Chiefs in this one. Yes. Yeah, as am I. All right, the Monday night football game and the last Monday night football game of the season. Packers and Vikings should be a good one. Has a really uh, winner likely will lock up the NFC North. Green Bay, I'm sorry, Minnesota is actually getting 5.5 points and being given the 68% chance to win this game. The Packers, uh, their defense, 7th most points to running backs, 21.5 points a game, 20th to wide receivers, 20.9. We do know that Dalvin Cook is out. So are you playing Mike Boone or Alexander Madison, who is questionable? So that is something you have to watch. If he sits, it's going to definitely be the Mike Boone show. Who are you starting at running back as they definitely have the better matchup against this Green Bay defense? You know, Madison was sidelined still at practice today. They've got an extra day because it's the Monday night game. But, man, that ankle, it's – but. David Chow looked at it, one of the the FF docs. He looked at the tape, and, and from what I've been hearing from the doctors in the fantasy football industry, they're all saying, man, it's a high ankle sprain. Well, yeah. if that's the case, even if Madison does play, it's going to be limited. It's He's not going to be super effective, so... I think Mike Boone leads that backfield. You, you know, there's a reason some of these guys are third string. You know, Boone was there last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think maybe even the year before. I don't, I'm not, I don't remember if it's his second or his third year. But, I believe it's his third. But Madison came in and just swept right past him to become the backup. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Boone made a, might have had great athletic measurables um but it didn't it didn't take anything for madison to be the number two so boone does scare me a little bit uh amir abdullah is there and once upon a time he flashed as well yeah so i if i'm playing boone it's because i'm desperate and i i'm just out of running backs Yeah, I mean, I think if you're a Dalvin Cook owner, you might have to, unfortunately. I, I don't, you know he's out. I think you, at best you're hoping Alexander Madison is good to play, but as you said, ankle inj- injury, I mean, that's that's a tough one. It could just take one wrong step and he rolls it and is out again. So, it, it, unfortunately, if you're a Cook owner, you're you're in a tough situation. I, I think if you've got him, you can throw Boone in and hope for the best. The, the one thing you do have going for you is it is a good matchup for him. Uh, the Green Bay defense has just been bad against the run, so maybe he falls into the end zone a couple times because uh, it, it's obviously, again, th- this is it for us in fantasy championship week. So you you got to do something. Uh, with that being said, it is a tough matchup in the secondary here. Kirk Cousins, uh a uh, lot of talk, obviously, on him not being able to get it done in primetime games. Diggs and Thielen need Cousins to throw him, throw them the ball. So do you trust Diggs or Thielen in this game? Yeah, I, I, I definitely think if they're on your team that, that you're going to play him. Yeah. That it, it's, I mean, yes, the Packers have good defensive backs. But you have good wide receivers, and at some point, you just got to trust your guys are going to do their job. And, and Thielen and Diggs have shown that any given game, they can either one of them can put up not wide receiver one numbers, but the wide receiver one numbers. Mm-hmm. And so you just you roll them out there. They're both really good. Thielen's healthy now. Uh, you know, hearkening back to to Mike Boone, one of the other things there you have to worry about is C.J. Ham. They've shown that they're not afraid to let Ham carry the ball or let Ham catch some passes either. Uh, I there's all I might be concerned that the Minnesota backfield is a three headed monster. Ah, oh, that man, that sucks. Because if that is true, like I said, just having Dalvin Cook go down like that in the in the week that you need him most, a guy who has been one of the best running backs all season long and has definitely carried you to this championship week would just absolutely suck. 
Uh, on uh, on the Packers side here, the Vikings defense, twenty uh, fifth most points to running backs, just sixteen point one points a week. Tenth most to wide receivers, though twenty four point eight. We were talking about it earlier on on their secondary just bend bad, and when we were discussing putting Rodgers in one of your super flex lineups. Before we get to the wide receiver side, because I feel like that is very easy. Aaron Jones, tough matchup here. Seventh best defense against the run here uh, overall and in fa- allowing fantasy points against. Aaron Jones, are you throwing him in your lineup? Hell yes, I'm throwing him in my lineup. All right. You know, you dance with who brung you. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't disagree with you. The chances of you actually having someone better than Aaron Jones are probably fairly limited. I would say lower expectations a little bit. I still think he finishes. I think he has a shot at finishing as an RB1, but chances are he's probably a high-end RB2 for me this week. I do think he scores a touchdown. My only fear is do they lean more on Jamal Williams in the receiving game like we've seen throughout the season. That would worry me a little bit about Jones, but I'm with you. You've got to have him in there. There's no way you can sit him. Unless you've got Zeke and Barkley on your team as well, in which case, yeah, you can go ahead and put Aaron Jones on your bench. But chances of you having that are probably pretty slim. Uh, on the receiving side here, it's just Devontae Adams, right? I mean, I don't – Adams is just a, an extremely reliable target and the best wide receiver on that team. I don't know how you can play anybody else. Yeah, I agree 100%. All you know, right. I had high hopes for MVS. Yeah, I think man, a lot of us did. It, it just didn't pan out. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they actually go wide receiver again, if maybe we see Equinemia St. Brown take a, a step forward in the offseason stuff and everything, but they they need to do something. Cause, I mean, I guess they don't need to do something because Adam still is torching everybody, and, and they all know that he's the, the best wide receiver on the on that team. So uh, who are you picking to win, Packers or Vikings? I'm going to go with the Packers. As am I. Well, Dennis, thank you, obviously, so much for doing this with me today. I love doing the Friday shows. We're getting really close uh, to the end of the season here. Uh, we'll discuss off air uh, what we want to do next week. Uh, most leagues we know don't play in week 17, so maybe we just do an off season recap show or off season. Uh, Regular season recap show. Maybe we will do something for those of you who do play in week 17. Uh, but obviously have yourself a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and yours. I hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy your days off. Uh, and I do look forward to talking to you again next week, especially before the big one and the Buckeyes and the Clemson game because it is going to probably ha- cause me a lot of heart problems next week, I feel well, like. It, it's going to be it's going to be a great game. It hey, is. before we check out, yeah. I just want to say congratulations to D Brown FF88 yes, yes. and to Jonathan Weber82 who are going for the championship uh, in the Fantasy Football Roundtable Listener League, the Knights of the Roundtable. So yes. congrats, guys. Uh, we appreciate you being in the league. We'll send some uh, shout-outs out to the other people in the league as well here. Uh, but uh, it's it's been a great – I almost eked into the championship game, but uh, D. Brown took me out, so – Yeah, I was hoping you would uh, – I was hoping you No, John Weber in. beat me, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping you'd make it in because I don't, I didn't even, you know, you could honestly fairly say that I'm the Cincinnati Bengals of the league this year. My team has just been bad. I did not show up at all. I'm pretty sure I finished in last place, actually, which is not good for being the host of the podcast. But you know what? I was hoping you'd represent, but what, let's be honest, uh, both him and Jonathan, uh, D Brown and Jonathan both drafted amazing teams. They've, they've done a really good job all year. So I'm excited to see who ends up in winning that one. I think, uh, Brown has the, the upside chance because he's got Lamar Jackson. And anybody who owns Lamar knows how well their seasons are going for him because he has been phenomenal as well uh, this year. So congratulations, as Dennis said, to both of you. Uh, looking forward to see who ends up winning that matchup. Dennis, have yourself a, a good weekend and a Merry Christmas, buddy. And I look forward to talking to you next week. Right on. Merry Christmas to you and your family, too. Prepare for glory! I don't know if you got your pop on yet.
As a small business owner, you deserve more. More confidence, more connectivity, more of the tools that help your business thrive. And at Cox Business, you can expect more from us. We don't just have sales reps. We have perfect plan identifiers. People who will work with you to make sure your business gets everything it needs and nothing that it doesn't. Your business deserves more, and that's why you can expect more from Cox Business. Call 800-526-8572 to switch today. As a small business owner, you deserve more. More confidence, more connectivity, more of the tools that help your business thrive. And at Cox Business, you can expect more from us. We don't just have sales reps. We have perfect plan identifiers. People who will work with you to make sure your business gets everything it needs and nothing that it doesn't. Your business deserves more, and that's why you can expect more from Cox Business. Call 800-526-8572 to switch today.